Good morning, everyone. How are you? Anyway, last week we were in here and we went to Canada for a small trip. It was really nice. We we visited um, our uh, my brother's family, and he was not was he is my best friend, and he was my best fundraising buddy. He was um, in the we were kind of he was my fundraising captain. Uh, MFT captain, witnessing leader, kind of my best member. Uh, now I miss him a lot. And so kind of recently, this last past five years, I hadn't meet him. So uh, this is first time in this past uh, several years I'm meeting him and his family. Also his um, two beautiful children, I never met them uh, until this last week. So it was so nice, and uh, also last week we visited Toronto Church, and that also was very nice experience. Our uh, Reverend Munshi Kim was giving the sermon, and I know many of you know him. He was part of New Jersey community before, and that Toronto Church also very similar to us. The only thing is that they are much smaller, otherwise exactly same, very diverse and. Uh, um, kind of very welcoming and it was really nice. And our um, headquarters staff, Xinying, also was there. And uh, I, met to, I met one of my old, uh, old friend from Sri Lanka who was pastor there for several years. And it was a nice experience. And uh, I thank you for your prayers. It was a long drive, uh, but I'm sure um, yeah, prayers work. We didn't have any trouble during this um, long drive. I was driving by myself all back and forth. It was really nice driving up because um, um, going upwards, we drove daytime, so we could uh, see all these beautiful leaves and uh, it was amazing to see even same one tree had so many different kinds of colors. And in my part of India, we have only green, <laughs> no other colors, and always green, so it never even fall down, I think, kind of. my It's like a rainforest type all the time. So thank you for your prayers, and I want to especially thank to our church staff and volunteers who kept everything very, very nicely, had wonderful service last week. And because of all of your support, all of our volunteers' support, our community leaders' support, it really went very nice even in, um, without uh, my presence here. I, I, we sincerely thank for that. Thank you so much. And um, by the way, how do, how do you like the Hunduk reading today? Like it? Maybe some of you listened to that directly from Father. I know probably Dr. Ang and Mrs. Ang was there and maybe some others. Uh, I think last time, um, Reverend Sato and Mr. Sato mentioned they were there. And this is from Yankee Stadium speech, God's Hope for America speech. And I choose this uh, passage. And this is, this is Father talking about um, the how we, how America got started and the fathers, according to fathers on words. Father said that it is most important that we know whether the United States of America was conceived by God or not. And then he again mentioned that it is my firm belief that the United States of America was indeed conceived by God. It was a will of God. God wanted this great nation to be um, conceived, centered on God's principles, centered on the ideology of God. And yet, it says, like Father continued, saying that, yet there were two kinds of people came to America, came to this country, one group of people seeking for wealth, seeking for making more opportunities to make more money or make um, things better for themselves. And there, are, there were other group who were seeking for more freedom or place where they can worship God freely or place where they can live together with other people with freely without kind of worrying about other, uh, others oppressing them. So, Father said, 
these two types of people came to America. But again, Father continued that even though these two type of people came to America and looking for two different things, fundamentally two different things they were looking for. But luckily, this plan of God worked well because <clears throat> it was the men of God and the women of God, they were the ones who were able to found this country in a way, incorporate this country. And do you think that's the case only in uh, America? We have two types of people, good people, bad people, or in a way, if we say, kind of some people who are kind of focused on themselves and others a little bit kind of consider other people also. But in a simplified term, kind of little bit selfish people and selfless people. Are they only exist in America, these self selfish people? What do you think? No? no? Everyone, even though everyone didn't say anything, I can see everyone shake, shaking hands, no? It's everywhere. It's not just here. All over the world, this is the same thing. It was always like that. There were people who wanted to have, um, lead a life centered on God, uplift the principles of God, and there were always another group opposing. And kind of they want to get, adv get advantage of themselves, for themselves. And uh, today, after the first sermon, one, one of our members came to me and he was saying to me that uh, two days before he was watching a National Geographic documentary about um, this um, first immigrants coming to America, and even between themselves, they are fighting. And one group want to have control and uh, um, just use everything for themselves, and other group did not want to do that. And here, in this country, in this case of this America, the people who had good motivation, people who wanted to live for the sake of others, who wanted to live for the sake of God, and wanted to live for the sake of greater purpose, they were able to conceive this country based on those principles. And they wanted to make sure that this country will last longer based on those principles. This country will be a leading country in the world. And in fact, this is the leading country in the world for God. And so many years. But this, uh, by the time Father gave this speech, it wasn't exactly uh, the same way. And I also believe that our movement, which started in early, um, this, uh, earlier this uh, last century, like in 30s, 40s, and 50s, this also was a great movement inspired by God. God asked our true parents to start that in order to continue the ideals of God. And based on those ideals, our true parents started that. And our early members who were able to really establish many uh, foundations, many organizations, organizations in order to continue that vision of God and establish them to become a beacon of the uh, world, our true parents established that. And, and one thing I want Point, I feel like there was a little bit difference from uh, America and our movement. And there are a lot of similarities, like uh, our movement is just as America, it's so diverse. And all around the world, people are here, yet equally treated. And I remember the time I came to this country, like first I came in 19, uh, sorry, 2008, end of 2008, just for four days. and. I never felt I'm kind of an outside alien coming just for a few days uh, because they never, people never treated me as a newcomer here. 
And I traveled to many other countries also. Uh, actually, in Canada also, it was kind of same. It was kind of very mixed. And um, I didn't really felt anything kind of, I stand out as a foreigner. Uh, but many other countries I visited always, I felt like an, I'm an outsider. So I believe that's because this founding uh, fathers or people who incorporated these countries' um, principles, they made sure that things have to go on uh, with equality uh, and to treat others the same way we wanted to be treated. And still we can see that. And in our church also, our founders as well as our elder members made it sure that we all get treated equally. And that's why in our church, we are totally equal, um, um, kind of mixed up from all around the world, from Europe, from Africa, India, many other countries in Asia, South America, from everywhere. But we all got treated equally because this is based on that founding principles. The principles we founded was very, very clear. This is for God. This is created by God for all people, not just for one country, not just for one um, culture people, for everyone. And that's why we can see this. Here, in case of America, as we said, by the time Father was uh, speaking in Yankee Stadium, what was it? Actually, Father talked about this. There were two types of people. Then uh, good people um, made it possible to make this country incorporated with great, based on great ideals. But do you remember some part of that God's Hope for America speech? Father was warning us. Father was warning this country because this country can, is kind of losing its foundation, uh, the values um, we believed as our foundation. And Father warned us, if we lose that, God's hope will be lost. God doesn't have any other country God can count on. There is no other country in this whole world where God can truly feel that, okay, this country is going to be a place where I can totally believe that this is going to be okay. The world is going to be, this country can lead world restoration. There wasn't any other country. That's why God was feeling kind of, oh, this is dangerous, this country. I have to send my person to this country so that it can go on like with the same passion and same conviction it had in the very beginning. And still we have that danger. Do you agree with me? Do we have the danger still in this uh, country? I'm not saying only this country has the danger. All other places, it has even more danger and in worse situation. But danger means like we had a hope and right now we are almost kind of feeling like, um, oh, we don't have any more hope. But I don't think we are kind of lost, but we are, God is warning us that we have to stand up. We have to stand up to keep this country as God's hope and then give hope to everyone in this world. Give hope to the entire humanity. We need to have this. And as I mentioned, in our movement also, I don't think all the people who came in the beginning was with the, all with the right mind uh, and totally uh, good, uh, purely motivated. But one thing happened in our movement was not so much um, you know, falsely motivated people, people could continue because of our MFTs or because of so and so, so much of training. And I don't think anybody who has a false motivation, who wanted to be rich by using uh, uh, our church or anything could stay here anymore. And maybe one week or one, um, one year or one few months, 
Uh, I, I personally see that often happen uh, in our pioneering days. And so many people join, and then next week they are, they, we don't come anymore. And because our, we were always looking for people who can stand up for God. We were looking for kingdom builders. And we were not kind of giving out a um, lot of money to people. We were not giving away goodie bags to everyone. But we were asking people, can you join with us? And I remember uh, almost everyone joined in the early times. They were joining to make a change in this world. They wanted to make a change. Isn't it? What, what, do you agree with me? I, I many times I talk to our elder members, they all, they all wanted to make a change in this world and that was the only reason they joined with this movement. And our church also, all people who are still, who are here in this church, I'm, I'm certain, absolutely sure that only because of their conviction towards the ideals of God, they were able to continue. And even right now when we are looking, and here we can see in, in case of America, we have, like even though in the founding fathers we had kind of victorious and even that uh, the, uh, our constitution and everything kind of totally laid out equality and uh, everything there, Satan did not give up. Satan did not say, oh, now I don't have any, any um, choice. Let me give up. I, I want to go and take some rest. Do you think it was the case? Satan was always continuing working to bring that, this country down. Bring this amazing um, hope of God really bring down. And that's why they never give up. They were continuously working to bring this country down. That's why still we can see. That's why we have a lot of problems still. And that's why we are kind of many times we feel like, oh, we are going to lose. And so people who are in the right side, people who believe, with, um, believe that we are here to help God. We are here to help uh, uh, God's side to keep up. We have to stand up. And only by giving and helping other people, only by being a person who can bring something to the table, we can really bring victory to this, uh, this fight, this uh, thing. I, I believe, like, um, in, um, uh, let me ask you something. How do you think, what do you think, which side you want to be? Like, I talk about two types of people. One, some people want to receive and other people want to give. Which side are we? Giving, giving. And do you think that is very easy? Being all the time giving and giving and again giving, then feels like there is no result? What? Yep. Give and receive, yes. And sometimes I, I believe our attitude actually makes that difference. We can be anywhere. And there are times, like some days, I'm totally, totally into that. I just want to receive. I don't want to, I don't want to give anything to anyone. Like some days when I go back home from work, I'm kind of totally exhausted. I just want to go home and take rest. I don't want to hear anything from my wife asking help to um, take care of my kids' homework. And uh, <laughs> then, then when, when she asked me something, then I said, don't you know that I'm so tired? Then she tells me, I'm also tired. <laughs> you think I was just uh, sleeping all day? Then I think many of us end up in those kind of situations some days. And have you had any experience some days you are coming to service, and Sunday service in the morning and just wonder, oh, this whole week was so bad and my boss was so rude and my coworker, he's, I, never, I, want, I wish I don't want to see him next week. 
I just wanted to just little bit energy from the service. And then when you come here, no one smile you, and no one want to <laughs> welcome. Even the greeters who were standing to greet, he didn't smile, and he didn't say anything. Then you came up, and then you after that you went downstairs, and in the fellowship, everyone have their own friends, and no one want to talk to you. And then you are going back home even more angry. Isn't it? Some, do you have some, sometimes do you have that experience? No? In this church, we all are so good, so we don't have that experience. <laughs> but I, I feel that sometimes we have that kind of experience. I remember one of my friends was saying that one day he wanted to really get uplifted. When he came, no one greeted him, and the, that whole day was so bad. But how it will be if everyone coming to this church expecting that this greeter is going to uplift him or her, then that day greeter had a bad day in the morning, so she decided not to smile to anyone. How it will be? Maybe we should come with a feeling that I'm going to cheer up everyone. I'm going to give something to everyone. I'm going to greet the first person I'm going to see this morning and give him a big hug so that the first person lift up the greeter, then greeter is happy, so everyone will receive a smile from greeter. How that will be? That will be better. And if... Look towards each other, just smile. Do you think somebody can stop smiling back to you? <laughs> Terry, Mr. Terry trying to hold on his <laughs> smile. <laughs> I know he's kind of a serious person and he's my best friend now. <laughs> and yeah, anyway, no one can hold off if somebody smiles to you. Always that great happiness come out. And that is the beauty when we decide to give something to other people. Even anyone we meet in the street, if we smile, automatically they have to give at least a small smile. And <laughs> some angry people, I know some days they are walking with an angry face, then when we smile, they, uh, something, some kind of weird smile they give back. And that's how we can, we can cheer up the world. And today, I really want to encourage you we are supposed to be the beacon of this world. This country was built upon the ideals of God. Same like that, our movement, our church, it was created on the ideals of God to really revive the world, to give love to the world, to bring divine, God's divine love to everyone. And if we decided to keep hold on that, I don't want to smile to anyone, it doesn't happen. And this coming week, even if you had a bad week in your office last week, be a person who bring back cheerfulness to your office. And then you can make that better. Then from that point, it will really start rolling. It will really start building up. Even in your school, if, if you are a student, you are going to school, some of the teachers are kind of really mean teachers. Sometimes my, my kids are some teachers, not everyone. And then I tell them that don't worry, just greet them. That the more you greet them, then gradually, this, your friends and your teachers and everyone, they will get better and better. And sometimes they may have a hard time in their families before they come to home then if we think like, oh, that person is not smiling to me because he's angry to us, that may not be the case. Probably that person may be kind of really suffering because of some reason. And if we are there to lift up them, we can really make this world a little bit better. And we are here to our, the very purpose of each and every human being each and every person sitting here is to lift up another person. And when you come to church, and remember that, that is your role. We are even coming here to lift up God. This is called a worship service, isn't it? Yeah. And saying, to, saying thanks to God. 
and paying our tributes to God and truly, really recognizing the great things God has given to us. And that is, Damien is a kind of acknowledging his wife, maybe the great, greatest gift we all have, our spouses. Always take, always remember that these are the great things God has given to us. And when we acknowledge we are coming here to say thanks to God and saying that God, because of you, we are here. Because of you, we have this good life. And I want to say thank you. And same way, I can say that just because of all of your presence, we can have an amazing community. And because we contributed, we have this amazing community. And when I travel kind of different um, uh, communities and meet with the people from other countries, many, many people told me that our church is so beautiful. And people say, oh, we, want, we are so happy to see you at church. You have a real church. Why do we have that? Because all of you decided to input something. You decided to contribute some financial support. And I know many of you gave big amounts of donation. And then we bought this church. And that is because that's the way we are building. We are kind of really making that. But what will be like if we all are fighting each other, each other how to divide this and take home? It may not even last for a week. So I, I really appreciate all of you did that great sacrifice. And even now also we are doing that in this community. The entire, everything we do because of your contributions, because of the support you do, because of the volunteering you do, because of the financial contributions, because you take care of each other. And that is the only reason we are surviving here. And I want to make sure that, I want to encourage you that your contributions and your, each and everything you are doing will make our church and our movement for, last forever. But what will happen? Yeah, Aju, amen. But what will happen if you think, oh, I want to take a break for one year. I don't want to contribute this year at all. I don't want to tithe. I don't want to give a donation. I don't want to volunteer for this year. How can we? We won't be able to survive. This great hope of God will not be able to continue, will not be able to survive. And every day, and even after one year, you are thinking of restarting. Maybe it's so hard to restart. Even like everything, every uh, church traditions we do, Hunduke, our witnessing activities, our tithing practice, this everything, we need to keep doing that every day in our life or every week in our life, every month in our life. Then only we will be able to continue. Otherwise, we, are, we can't. Once we stop, it's so difficult to restart. Once we, like, um, there is a quote from Einstein, life is like a pedaling a bike. You have to keep doing that. Our spiritual life also, same thing. It's like a, um, pedaling a bike. Once you stop, you can't be still. You're going to fall down to either one of the sides. Surely. That's why keep doing, and I, I kind of really, really uh, grateful to all of you who were phenomenal in building this community, and I want to thank all of our elders and our, um, our current grade, our membership. You all are doing an amazing job for God, standing up for God, and in case of America, it's almost like a, um, the other... Uh, Negative side is kind of almost gaining control. But in our church, it's not yet like that. We have to, we are still there with our conviction. And that conviction will allow us to go forward. And in order to keep doing that, each and every one of us have to think, how, what can I bring onto this table? How can I lift up others a little more? How can I, what can I, what can I contribute to the community? Sometimes it may be um, doing a volunteering activity for the Sunday service, or maybe talking to, giving a call to one of our members in your community, 
or just saying hello to a person who was sitting near to you in the church, or just asking how, how is he doing, like many of our brothers and sisters we know, uh, but probably you haven't seen him. Like uh, I remember last, um, last week one of our members told me that he called two, uh, two members and because he hadn't seen him for a while, seen them for a while, and all, both of them show up, and then they were so happy they came to church. And so it can be anything, but think about what you can do for your neighbor, your friend, your brother who, uh, who need a call. Think, and then once we do that, we will be able to really lift up our community, lift up our brothers and sisters, lift up God. I want to share a small Bible passage from uh, 1 Thessalonians. Its Bible says, Therefore encourage one another and build, build one another up just as you are doing. It says, Therefore encourage one another. We need that encouragement from God. We need that encourage from our brothers and sisters. And only through us, only through a brother and a sister, we can receive that encouragement. Without that, it's so tough. Without that, all by ourselves, if we want to go on in our spiritual life steadfast towards God, I don't think we will reach there. So be there, be a person who can lift up your brother. Also, let me read one more uh, uh, Bible passage from Proverbs. It is Proverbs 11, 24 to 25. It says, One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Whoever brings blessings will be enriched. And one who waters will himself be watered. This is a great and amazing wisdom God has given to humanity thousands of years back. Yet, it's still totally applicable. Do you agree with me? And before I, I shared some of my days, some of my worst days, but I have sometimes kind of amazing days, not sometimes, almost all the time I have amazing days when I go back home. Uh, like some, uh, many times, without waiting for Rani to welcome and greet me and hug me, I kind of just run into my home and uh, hug kids and Rani, then uh, even if they are sometimes having a hard time to do homeworks and things, they get pumped up, they get so happy. And some days, kind of, if I'm negative, I kind of ask, what did you cook? And then uh, some days she, she's, oh, I haven't started that. Really? You didn't do anything? Then I don't want any food. Something like I get angry and upset. But there were days, like, uh, even though they were nothing, we said, oh, okay, let's start cooking. Then we kind of, all together, we start cooking, and then we have an amazing day. And we, it is all about our attitude. If I'm ready to give, automatically that kind of good, positive return will come back to me. But if I'm going there and then asking kids, why you didn't finish homework before I come? And why you didn't sleep? And why you are asking me to massage and this and that? <laughs> Sometimes my older daughter asks me all the time, Apaji, can you massage my leg? <laughs> Actually, if I say no, and then it takes like a half an hour or one hour for, to make her sleep. But if I say yes, and just hold on to her, like within one minute, she's totally asleep. And I'm amazed by that. And just a few press, kind of, she's totally down. And, but if my attitude is wrong, I can mess up everything. And so always think about what you can bring and what you can give to other people instead of waiting for other people to initiate. So we will be able to become a great community and you will truly become a blessing to other people. Always remember, when you go back to your 
office from uh, next week. Be, try to be a blessing to those people around you in your office. They may, you may think that, oh, my boss, he doesn't like me, but put that thinking aside and give him a good greet. Give him a smile. He will, he will return that same to you. And if you're going back to school this Monday, and even if you had a bad time last week, be, bring, bring some happiness back to your school. Bring some happiness back to your family. Even if you're having some bad time, bring always bring back some happiness back to your family so that you will receive it back, so that it will get multiplied. And you, I know you all, all are doing that. Thank you so much for doing this amazing uh, contribution to our community. Uh, being part of this community, you all are kind of contributing to God. Even the very act that you are here today, that is something very, very meaningful for God and for each and every one of our brothers and sisters. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Thank you.